morning, everyone. It is right around sunrise, and I'm just going out for a wander to see what other kind of subjects I can find. Uh, today's supposed to be windy, but it says that there's a pretty good chance of blue skies most of the day, so I might be able to find some stuff to shoot. And uh, I'm in a canyon right now where there's this really cool box elder tree. And I photographed this back in 2019. And back then the tree fit within this really nice composition within this slot canyon here. And this tree is growing pretty fast. And it's outgrown that composition. I'll have to compare photos to see how much more it's grown, but it's uh, quite a few feet taller. But yesterday when I was making my way back to camp, I uh, was driving along the road and I found a rather interesting scene with this uh, pine tree that was being spotlit by the last little bit of sunlight. And I'll have to revisit that scene today to see how it looks and see if I can find a composition on it. But that sort of fleeting light is rather difficult to photograph on large format unless you know where it is going to be ahead of time. So we'll see on that. But there's another area which I haven't visited on this trip but I did last year and it has these really cool rocks that have uh, tumbled down the slope and they're just arranged very very nicely and so that's an area I'm considering photographing that would be a uh, late afternoon sort of photo but I figure I'm going to spend the morning wandering around getting a feeling for the fall color and with the wind picking up uh, a little later today, as well as tomorrow, we might get some nice leaf litter on the ground. So that'd be pretty fun to shoot. But until then, I'm gonna keep wandering. So if you take a look at that tree right back there and toward the top of it right there, you'll see the height of the flash flood debris, which is pretty crazy to think because if I was standing over there, I'd be about that tall. And so it's crazy to think that this whole thing was filled with just a torrent of raging water. And that's the very force that carves these canyons. So it's pretty crazy to see the debris up so high. Well, it is now midday and I spent the morning wandering around a little bit and checking out some of the washes I'm quite familiar with. And there's one particular scene that I photographed last year and I just wasn't quite satisfied with the results. Um, the composition was fine, but there was just a little bit of wind movement on this maple that is tucked behind a sandstone wall in a slot canyon. And so I was thinking about trying to rephotograph that scene on this trip but the fall color has been pretty slow. And so when I first got here, that tree was just completely green. And even when I checked up on it today, it still looked like it was quite green when I stood at the top of the Salt Canyon and looked down at it from above. Uh, but then as I was wandering around a little bit, um, I looked at it from the vantage point of photographing it. It actually has some really nice color on it. It's just the sort of thing where you don't realize it from looking at it from above, but when you're down below looking at it, it was actually quite nice. And I knew my window of opportunity wasn't very long, so I didn't have an opportunity to grab my video kit. But I grabbed my uh, 8x10, went down there, set up a composition, and some clouds rolled over. Now, when the clouds roll over, it kills the light. So the light went really, really flat. But I just waited it out. Eventually, those clouds drift past, and the wind was really calm, and I had an opportunity to expose a single sheet of Provia on that scene. So... That's pretty cool, feels good to expose some film. But now the plan for the afternoon is to visit a scene I found a couple of years ago with some rocks that have tumbled down this sandstone uh, formation. And they just look really nicely arranged. And I think it gets some really nice late afternoon light. So I'm gonna see about going over there. And it's a pretty wild area, an area where I've seen uh, a plethora of mountain lion tracks in the past so that's definitely something to be aware of but I think it'll be it'll be just fine and my window of light won't be 
too late into the evening. But I'm just gonna enjoy spending a little time here relaxing, and then hit the trail and see what I can find. Well, I went ahead and set up my composition, and I've got one hand on my camera here because there's been some gusts of wind at time, which will be one factor I'll be working with. But we've got these really cool rocks here, which have uh, rolled down onto this large, uh, relatively flat area of sandstone. And the rocks have a really cool texture to them, kind of a cross-hatched sort of texture. They're darker, there's some lichen on them, and then the sandstone that they're sitting on has some striations going this way, yet the rocks have an emphasis going that way. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how this looks, especially in reflected light. But the composition is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just making use of all those natural lines and just a little bit of front tilt in order to uh, keep everything in focus. Now my goal is to photograph this when the foreground here falls in the shade and then the light source will be the light reflecting off this huge area of sandstone. And so I'll get a nice, warm, soft kind of side light on the scene, so. Uh, but wind is definitely the concern and it'll be interesting to see if I'm able to do video as I shoot the photo, uh, just cause I don't want the video camera getting knocked down or the big camera getting knocked down. But there's breaks in the wind, so I'm fairly certain that there'll be at least some sort of opportunity to expose some film. For now it's just waiting game. We've got probably an hour or so, and then uh, we'll see if I can get this photo. Sophie's choice. Well, that worked out pretty well. I went ahead and exposed three sheets of film. The first was when there was just a little bit of direct light on the front rock, just 
a glimmer of light because I figured maybe a little bit of a spotlight effect might add a little bit more dimension to it. Completely experimental, but we'll see. But then I exposed two sheets of film with the reflected light as it is right now. And uh, it was a half second at f45. So that works out pretty well because the lens is timing it and it just makes things a little bit easier. So but the light's beautiful, looks really, really nice. And what I think is fascinating about these rocks is that they tumble down from high up somewhere and they've just been sitting here eroding for, I don't know, tens of thousands of years, but they've just been sitting in these exact same spots for that amount of time. And there's something about a subject like this that has a story behind it. So definitely pretty fun to find a composition on it. But now it's time to get things packed up. I'm going to make the long trek back to my car. And uh, I might scatter around a little bit more because it is only 4.45 right now. But it would certainly be nice to uh, get out of Mountain Lion Mesa before Mr. Kitty wakes up. So Time to get things packed up and head back to my truck. The gusts of wind that evening were only a hint at what would arrive in the days to come, which made me all the more appreciative of the photos I managed to capture that evening. And although all the photos I exposed that day were adversely affected by expired film, it wasn't much of a loss for the first scene with the maple in the slot canyon. It's the composition of this photo I'm least satisfied with. So the muddy shadows are the least of my worry. I know I'll stare at the scene again next year and see if I can find a solution I'm satisfied with. My photo of the rocks has the same muddy shadow tone, but much like the photo of the fallen Ponderosa I photographed the day before, this subject was bright enough to avoid most of the problems caused by the expired film. I love the tortured look of these rocks, especially when bathed in beautifully warm reflected light. I look forward to returning to this area again next year to see what else I can find. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you around next time. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a volunteer contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints and my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.